the Roman name for Medusa, and differences in mythology. When it comes to the snake-haired Gorgon whose gaze could turn someone to stone, the Romans did what they often did with Greek mythology. They borrowed her, lock, stock, and barrel. So Medusa is Medusa, both in Greek and Roman mythology. Their method was more of a cut and paste than a reinvention when it came to names. Now, while the Romans were akin to grand plagiarists of Greek deity stories, they sometimes put their own little twists on them, tailored to suit the Roman spirit and their own narrative preferences. But with Medusa, the differences are pretty minimal, and not really in the larger framework of her story. The Greek myth narrates the tale of a beautiful maiden who served as a priestess to Athena. She was ravished by Poseidon in Athena's temple, an act which led her to be transformed by Athena into a creature with serpents for hair and the unlucky ability to petrify all who looked upon her face. Medusa's story ends at the hands of Perseus, who decapitates her, later using her head as a weapon before handing it to Athena. In contrast, Roman poets and authors did retell Greek myths, but didn't significantly change the core elements of Medusa's story. They were more concerned with the moral and practical lessons that could be drawn from these myths. Medusa's tale in Roman hands may emphasize different aspects, like the virtues of heroism and the triumph of Perseus, rather than the tragedy of Medusa's fate. But the narrative beats remain pretty much intact. It's worth pointing out that there's a bit of a misconception that Medusa is a standalone figure in these myths. She's actually one of three sisters, the Gorgons, but she's the most famous mainly due to her mortal nature and her interaction with Perseus. So whether you're strolling through the ruins of an ancient Roman city or flipping through a book on Greek mythology here in Portland, you'll find that Medusa's unsettling story is consistent across both cultures, a testament to its captivating power and one heck of a cautionary tale about the god's ability to give beauty and to take it away in the most terrifying of manners. Still, it's fascinating to see how a story can travel through time and space, morphing slightly to fit the culture it finds itself in. Kind of like how living in Portland is so different from living in, say, Miami. But there's a shared American spirit. And while we don't have temples or gods of the ancient sort, there are always new myths in the making, right? I mean, who knows, maybe a couple thousand years from now, they'll be telling tales about the mysterious hipsters from the Pacific Northwest and their arcane artisanal crafts.